Hello, and we are at the end of Unit B. We kind of ran short this time um, to do a review in class, so I thought I'd go through the review on video for you and explain each problem that's going to be on your test sometime this week. So we did, uh, Unit B was all about angles changing from uh, radians to uh, degrees and back again, rotations, arc lengths, and angular speed, angular velocity. So the first section of the review was to convert to radian measure and to give answers in terms of pi. So that means leave the pi in it, don't multiply it out. And if I look at number one, it says 60 degrees. Now when you're converting to radian measure, all you do is you multiply by pi over 180. So you'd take 60 times pi over 180 and put it in lowest terms. Pi over 3 would be your answer. And remember, pi is equivalent to 180 degrees. 180 divided by 3 is 60, so it's pi over 3. Number 2, multiply by pi over 180, you'll get 13 pi over 18. Negative 65 would reduce to negative 13 pi over 36. And negative 350 would end up to be negative 35 pi over 18. Number five, it says convert to degree measure. This is going in reverse. This is where you multiply by uh, 180 over pi instead of pi over 180. So you're doing the reverse. And um, when it says three radians, people will get this one wrong on the test. That doesn't say three pi radians. It's just this plain old three radians. So you're going to take and you'll get 171.9 degrees. The way you do that is you do three over one times 180 over pi. and you end up with, uh, what is it, 540 divided by pi, which ends up to be 171.9 degrees. When you have these with the pi in them, the quick and easy way to do it is to just replace pi with 180 degrees. So 6 pi would be 6 times um, 180, which is 10, 1080 degrees. And the next one is going to be 270 degrees and then 300 degrees. Just replace pi with 180. Those are the easy ones. Here we got arc length, and um, when you're talking finding lengths of arcs, you're using the formula S equals R times theta, where theta is in radians. So this one, it has a length of an arc of a circle with 10 meters radius, that's your R, and central angle of 3.1 radians, that's your theta, so it'd be S equals R times theta, so it's 10 times 3.1, which gives you 31 meters. This one, it says find the radian measure. That clues you in you're looking for theta. So you're going to divide 40 by 10, and you'll get four radians. Those are pretty easy. This one, find the reference angle for 240. So you have to, remember you're always, you never ever subtract from 90 or 270. I would draw it first. So here's my um, coordinate plane, and if I draw the 240 degrees, it is in the third quadrant. So there's the third quadrant. My reference angle would go back to the x-axis. So I'd do 240 minus 180. That's going to give me 60. And once you know that it's 60, then you should know sine, cosine, and tangent, because I had you guys memorize that for this unit. So the, the uh, sine of 60 is going to be square root of 3 over 2. Cosine is 1 half, and tangent is square root of 3. Since this is in the th third quadrant, x is negative, y is negative. So the only answer that's positive is tangent. So there's your reference triangle, 1, 2, square root of 3. These guys are negative. There's your point. So 60 degrees is that, negative square root of 3 over 2, negative a half, and square root of 3, like I said. These, the arc, uh, this is where people had trouble the most, and that is with angular velocity. But don't fear over this. It's just a simple uh, formula. The only thing is you have to watch your units, and you have to make sure that your omega is in radians per unit of time. This first one's a straight one. A flywheel is rotating at 6 radians per uh, second. It has a 14 centimeter diameter. What's the speed of a point on its rim in centimeters per minute? Notice you've got your, your time is in per seconds and your radius is in centimeters. So when we multiply that, it's going to be in centimeters per second. So V equals RW. So when you multiply that, you're going to end up with 6 times 14. Oh, not 14. This is diameter. You have to divide it by 2 to get 7 for your radius. So you're going to have 7 times 6. That gives us 42 centimeters per second. Centimeters comes from the length of your radius, and seconds is the rate of time for your um, 
omega, your angular speed. So to convert that, you know there are 60 seconds in a minute. So we'd multiply by 60, and you end up with 2,520 centimeters per minute. All right, next one, your answer will be 385 miles per hour, 385.4 miles per hour. If you've got it, you can kind of fast forward through this, but I'll go through it real quick. Again, you're using the formula V equals R times omega. So this is your R, 3,000 mile radius. Omega says one revolution every 24 hours. I know that's an omega because it says revolution. Anytime it says revolution, rotation, or radians, I know that's the omega, that's the angular speed. One revolution every 24 hours, so that's going to be two pi radians every 24 hours. Now all I have to do is multiply those two things together, and it'll be in miles per hour. And that's what they wanted. So 3,000 times 2 pi over 24, that's where the 785.4 came from. Wheel has 36 centimeters diameter. Be careful, it's diameter, not radius. The speed of a point on its rim is 11 meters per second. What's its angular speed? When you see this meters per second, you know right away that is velocity because it is not radians, rotation, or revolution. And it is per second. So you have the velocity and you can get the radi radius from 36 centimeters up here and you're going to be dividing. Your answer is 61.1. But notice right here, you got centimeters and meters. Those units have to match up. So you either change centimeters to meters or you change meters to centimeters. So that's your velocity, that's your angular speed, and your R is going to be 18 centimeters. 18 centimeters is the same as 1.8 meters. You can go that direction. I'm sorry, 0.18 meters, and that's where I do my conversion, that's the easiest. Divide this by 100 and you'll get your um, radius in meters. It has to be in meters because this guy's in meters. So you'd have 11 equals 0.18 omega, divide by 0.18, and that's going to give you the 61.1 radians per second. The water wheel, 16 foot radius, the wheel revolves 7 times per minute. What's the speed of the river in miles per hour? Well, notice it's wanting it in miles per hour. Our radius is in feet, and we're, we're in minutes. So the, the tough one with this is you have to get it, got to convert the feet to miles and the minutes to hours. So right away we know R. R is 16 and revolves 7 times per minute. You see the revolves? That's your angular speed per minute. So. W is going to be 7 revolutions every minute. Remember, 1 revolution is 2 pi, so this is going to end up to be 14 pi um, per minute, 14 pi radians per minute. We have our omega. Our radius is 16 feet, but it's going to be 16 feet, let's see, radius. So we just multiply those two together, 16 times 14 pi is going to be 224 pi feet per minute. This is where you have to do your unit conversion. So you have to have that there is 60 minutes per hour and um, there is one mile is 5,280 feet. So you multiply straight across those one units cancel out and that's how we ended up with about 8 miles per hour. All right, through how many radians does the minute hand of a clock rotate 40 minutes? They're asking for a simple angle measure. So this one, you just have to kind of logic out. You didn't have one like this on the homework. If you know, the answer is going to be 4 pi over 3, but if you think about it, you got 40 out of 60 minutes. All the way around, one full rotation is 60 minutes. So four, 40 out of 60 is 4 6 times 2 pi. That's where we got the 4 pi over 3. So it's 2 thirds of your two-thirds the way around. One on Earth, it should say on Earth, not one Earth, uh, one degree of latitude is how many kilometers and how many miles? Assume that the radius of the Earth is about 6,400 kilometers or 4,000 miles. So the answer you get is about 111.7 kilometers or 69.8 miles. You're supposed to do both of those on the test tomorrow. And what this is talking about is latitude and longitude. There's my Earth. It's kind of a nice Earth. It's the blue planet. There's the radius of the Earth. 
one degree is like right there. There's a little angle there. That central angle is one. And it goes up on the globe. It's kind of hard to draw it in 3D. But there's your one degree of latitude. So you, it's basically asking the arc length there. I thought that was an interesting problem. So there's the one degree latitude. And they want the arc length, that thing right there. So this was actually pretty easy because it's just S equals R times theta. And theta is one degree times pi over 180. That would get it into radians because it has to be in radians. And so you'd have pi over 180 times the side when you see me. So that's where the, the two answers come from. So pi over 180 times 4,000 and pi, pi over 180 times 6,400. That'll give you both of those answers. And um, we're done. So hopefully this helps a little bit with your review so that you had me talk you through each problem. I will see you later.